Well, good evening, guys and girls. It is Tom Panos here for the Sunday Night Rant. I am really sorry for coming in earlier than uh, those of you that join it uh, come in. And the reason why is that um, I'm uh, currently um, away, um, on my way for some business in Byron Bay. Um, so I'm sort of uh, stopped halfway. Amit, good to see you. There's a guy to watch out for, Amit Nayak. I saw him on the Bay Run this morning. Hey, Ash Heckles, another guy that won the real estate Jim Hill week, Taney Jane and Mole, good to see you. You should have been a winner as well, and Mole. Extraordinary stuff she's doing with social media at the moment. Leroy Jones, I'm watching what you're doing. Hi to everyone coming on. This is going to be a very short rant, and uh, I'm going to share with you yesterday. Hey, David, hi to you all. Guys, this is going to, yes, I'm super fit. And I'll tell you one of the reasons I'm getting super fit today, because of Bikram yoga. A lot of people ask me, what is it about Bikram? I've done nearly 50 sessions of Bikram. The first one was absolute torture. And what it was, it's 40 degrees heat. Hey, David, 40 degrees heat for 90 minutes with 40 degrees humidity. Sorry, by the way, I'm on a balcony outside at a hotel in... Um, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Port Macquarie. Sorry, Port Macquarie. Um, and we're just halfway through on the way to uh, Byron. I've got the two daughters with me. Anyway, cut a long story short, guys and girls. Why do I like Bikram? Number one, every time I walk in there, I feel like I'm getting a detox, getting rid of toxins. Number two, why? Because I feel like I get a facial every time. Number three, hi, Jason. Number three, I like it because it's one of the few times that I get two hours where I'm uncontactable, whether it's a client, family, a friend, a colleague, a random stranger, a service provider, I have time to myself. And one of the things I've learned, listen to me very carefully, whether you're doing meditation, or whether you're doing yoga, or whatever that you're doing, I'm finding this, that when I pause the mind, I get the inner work done. I get the inner work done. Remember this, with better thinking, you make better decisions. With better decisions, you take better actions. With better actions, you get better results. And congratulations to Chris Mernon, broker of the year, one of my clients, one of the best broker of the year. Well done, Chris. You're joining the, the, the template and the uh, winners of uh, Benno Desman, great you're in great uh, company there, Emil Juresi, good to see you. So guys and girls, that's the reason why. The other reason I like Bikram Yoga is I find the flexibility that it gives you. You just seem to be able to not have these niggling pains or injuries. Maybe that's because I'm 53. The other thing, um, yes, I have lost weight. I don't know whether it's got to do with Bikram. I think it's got to do with the fact that, you know, I trying to eat clean and I exercise, doing other things as well. Um, what are the other reasons why I like Bikram? Because it doesn't have too much spiritual hoo-ha, right? A lot of the other yogas, and I'm not saying I'm a spiritual person, but I find that it's got the perfect combination between yin and yang, right? That's what it is. And it's also, I find it allows me to go inward. That's the big thing. And I've got to tell you, You've got to be a bit of your own life coach yourself, right? You know, you're the subject, you're the scientist. And um, I'm doing four sessions, three a week. And um, in addition to that, I'm doing weights. Um, and I love the fact that it's this. And by the way, in terms of burning calories, it is a torture. I put on my Apple Watch. I've got to tell you, you're doing a thousand calories a session. A thousand calories a session. Anyway, guys and girls, let me also share with you a couple of concepts that I believe. There's a thing called COVID clarity. Hey, Daniel Starr. Hi to everyone that's come on. COVID clarity, my friends. COVID clarity is something that has emerged over the last six months. And what's happened is people are getting clear. Hi, Lisa Novak. People are getting super clear with things in their life. Why? Because COVID-19 was the chief technology officer that was trying to make change in an organization. And COVID-19 did something that a CTO couldn't do for years, but it did it in months. 
And I've got to say to you, one of the things I want to talk to you briefly tonight is the death of distance. The death of distance. Think about it. I've just landed at Port Macquarie. I've pulled out my mobile phone. I've put on my road mic. I've put on a light here. I'm sitting outside the balcony. I've got um, 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 a selfie stick and I'm talking to you coming through. Hey, Rodeo Grady, one of my brother's closest friends. Good to see you on there, Rody. He's lost a lot of weight as well. Uh, body pump, no. Uh, I don't do body pump, but I, I think you do, and that's why you lost 25 kilos. Anyway, guys and girls, let me tell you what COVID clarity has done. It has created the death of distance. Think about that for a moment. The death of distance. A wonderful article I was reading, I think yesterday, talking about the fact that people in New York and San Francisco are clearing out of the joint, right? Big numbers of people leaving, right? What we're really seeing in Australia is not a recession. No, no, no. We're seeing an inner city recession. That's what we're seeing. I've noticed it. I've been tracking the numbers and what we're noticing is a bit of an inner city recession. People in the inner city, units. Units are not hot, but houses are hot. And what we're seeing is that where unemployment has hit most is in the inner city. And that's because what's happening is people are doing C and tree changes, right? But does this mean that this is the death of cities? Absolutely not, because there's great learnings from 1919 when the Spanish flu was out, which killed, I think, somewhere between 50 and 100 million people. And that's what we were all paranoid about. And I've got to say to you that what we're learning back then is that people, even though they were worried about disease, urbanization still not only survived, it thrived. Why? Because people need face-to-face -face interaction. Why? Because the cities are going to have workers back in there. It might not be for six months, it might be in a year's time, but there's three things that you can't get, particularly in the world of corporate and innovation, and that is you need to have face-to-face -face interaction. Why? Because innovation needs it. Because the real clarity comes in conversations where people have in the corridors, where people have in cafes, and where people have in conferences. And that is not achieved by Zoom. So what you're going to see is that slowly the cities are going to come back. Sydney, Melbourne, London, they'll come back but we're also seeing what I call the death of distance. And that is that there are certain roles and certain organisations where distance doesn't matter now. I'll be working tomorrow from Byron Bay. I'll be working and many people are doing that now. They're working and they're having C and tree changes. Hey Mark, good to see you again. So guys and girls, all I'm saying to you is COVID clarity means that you need to be talking to your clients on the phone all the time because people now, what they're doing is they're changing their mind about their life on a weekly basis. You can't rely putting that person in a CRM system and hoping the conversation you had with them six months ago is a conversation they're going to live by. People change their minds in an instant, right? Like I did today. There was no way I was going to be in Byron Bay tomorrow, but I am because that is what's happened. The death of distance, the resurgence of Zoom, meaning that people are gonna be able to work from anywhere. But does this mean that this is the end of city and urbanization? No, absolutely not, because deep down, we're creatures that need interaction. Couple of other things, wonderful, wonderful sentence I used yesterday to get a deal done. The owner says to me, we're a bit short, I think about 20 grand, the owner says, Tom, I really want to, I need this money so we can use it at our next place that we're going to buy. So I want this money, I need extra. I looked at them and I said, can I ask you, would you pay another $20,000 on a property because the person you were buying from said to you, I need this extra money so I can do some renovating in the new place I'm buying? And the owner says, I guess you're right. I said, correct. And we sold that property. I want you to know that every day when you're a real estate agent, you're having conversations with buyers and sellers and you need to come up with sentences and metaphors and scripts and dialogues that help people make a decision that is a rational decision, right? And I always say that scripts are telling the truth efficiently, right? 
and never use a thousand words when 50 will do. Remember that. And that's why you need to know that your mouth in real estate is what you get paid for, right? Or in an instance, you know, I had a person that'd say, oh, Tom, you know, uh, I don't want to sell it for 1.9 because I paid uh, uh, 2 million for it. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I've got to let you know, today what we've achieved is market value. What you purchased for was called purchase value. Can I tell you that there's no link between purchase value and market value? You see, for instance, if you'd inherited the property for free, not paid two million for it, it doesn't mean that market value changes today. Guys and girls, be a pro. I'm so pumped because I'm letting you know we're just walking out, working out our plans for 2021 and it's going to involve a lot of scripts and dialogues, master classes that we're going to be holding around the country for our real estate gym members. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to give a person that I know, actually, she was looking after my contract at News Corp. Fiona Mellor, uh, fantastic person. Well, what she's done, is that uh, she's gone into uh, she's gone into business. She's gone into business with uh, with someone on a product that I think is super super good. You see, I'm a person that struggles with masks because I can't breathe in them, right? So she sent me three or four masks, right? And what the first thing I noticed about them is that they were really nice, colourful, and um, they were stylish, right? And then I noticed that when I put them on. They didn't make me feel like I couldn't breathe. And they're designed to fit snugly for easy breathing. And there's just like every mask is different. They just produce a different mask. No two masks are the same. And I've got to tell you, the other thing is they're cotton lining and they can be washed with hot water and not be shrunk. The real, the real secret about these masks is that they've come, I'm reading it here, from uh, an original face mask from the talented artist Marty Skepsi, a celebrated artist in her own right, but married to one of Australia's most famous, most famous celebrated film directors, Fred, Fred Skepsi. And I've got to let you know that Susan's going to put the URL, the URL in the comments there because they are fantastic marks. You can buy them in bulk. I think they're three for 65. So they're not the cheapies, right? But I've got to tell you, man, if you've been avoiding putting them on, look at this one. Cool? This one? What about this one? This is my favourite. Right? But every mask is different. Guys and girls, that is the rant. Enough said, I'm letting you know that we are now in our Grand Slam season, October, November, December, actually November, December, eight weeks to Christmas. We're counting down the weeks. I'm letting you know everywhere around Australia, it is going nuts. It's going nuts. Just get more listings. Everything is selling right? Get more listings. GML. That's your strategy. Taney, good to see you. you. Taney smashed it. I think he did I think he did 11 sales for the month of October. Diana, good to see you. She's a fantastic person. Guys, girls, signing off. I'm going out to have dinner. And always remember, if you can be anything, be kind. You don't know the suffering that people are going out privately. I can tell you right now, there is a number of people I know in the real estate world, very successful people, New Zealand, Australia, all over the place, going through some terrible illnesses. And from the bottom of my heart, if you're watching, and I know most of you are, because the reason I know is that we're pretty close, I pray for a speedy recovery, and I want to let you know, think possibility, not probability. Guys and girls, signing off.